<clears throat> and we're live. Yes, we are live. Did you do that? that mm -hmm. Oh, look at you, Lynn. <laughs> look at you. Love it. All right. Come on, ladies. Don't be shy. All right. Let us know. Hi, Linda. Hi, Anna. Welcome, welcome. Make sure that you share this, all right? Let the other ladies know that it's available for them. So please share. Oh, and I'm supposed to be playing music at this point. At oh this yeah! Time right now, I will give me a second. Give me a second. All right, all right. Come on in, ladies. Come on in. All right. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Oh, Cleopatra, tell us where you're from. If you're not from the um, local area, Tampa, St. Pete. Hi, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hello. All right, so I have that. And <clears throat> come on in. Hi, D. Hi, Tracy. Come on in. Share this with other ladies. I'm going to play one of my favorite songs as we wait right now. All right. So let me check out. Okay. Oh, Lydia, Take a moment. Antonio. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so, ladies, I'm so excited because we're actually on the YouTube channel as well. It's our first time ever I'm doing this. So far, so good. So if you know anyone who's not on Facebook, you might have a friend, uh, you know, relative, they're not on Facebook, you can send them the YouTube link. Hi, Lisa. Yay, you connected. Awesome. Hi, Sheena. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Good to have you ladies on here. Oh, HQ Empowerment. That's the queen right there. <laughs> oh. Yes. We're going to be content in every circumstance. Why? Because Jaira is enough for us. Amen. Can I get an amen? Awesome, awesome. So make sure you guys are are sharing this live stream. Share the live stream. Make sure that we are inviting as many ladies as possible. All right, I got amens. I got amens. <laughs> yes, we are in agreement here. Yes, awesome. We'll get started in a few few minutes. I know that it takes a while sometimes as people are getting the notifications, getting stuff settled. And as we wait, you can just call out his name, Jaira. Jaira. Yes. You are enough. Jaira, you are enough. Yes. Awesome. Shante is on. Twan is on. More than enough. Yes. And Queen, you are enough. We are enough just as we are because he makes us enough. Awesome. Awesome. Do you know who you are? That's key right there. That is key. Yes, yes. Awesome. Lynn, I got to give it up to you. You're doing great with these banners here. <laughs> 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 
Yes. Cleopatra, amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. Yes. If you know what he's spoken, you got to remember it. I always say write it down and remember it. Yes. Hi, Agatha. Yes, we are loved, ladies. We are loved. All right. So to honor your time on here, thank you so much for um, tuning in, ladies. Hey, Lisa, I haven't seen you in a good minute. Welcome. <laughs> thank you for tuning in. All right. Oh, Audra. Overwhelmed Christian mommy. I love it. <laughs> Hi, Audra. Awesome. All right. So we want to honor your time um, because I know that we all, right, have um, busy lives and always so many things happening and um, things to do. But however, I think it's important that we do get together, you know, on a regular basis, even if it's virtually, even if it's online um, and just, you know, share, um, share, you know, and, you know, getting together. But there's a purpose behind it as well. I think that's, you know, that's the main thing. So, you, if you've been um, following us, you know we've been. We today are inviting you to join us on a discussion on anxiety. It's going to be great. I believe that it will be um, for some of you guys breaking down chains and barriers and all that you know good stuff. Um, and just want to make sure that we stay connected, stay here. Um, but for any new ladies that we may have out there, or just as a refresher, because sometimes we forget, I want you to know my heart, right? So we do this on a regular basis, but I want you to know my heart because this, is, this isn't just about getting together to have fun, right? This is also about growing and being stretched, you know, in God. And so Chosen's mission statement, I know Crossover has a mission statement that we repeat um, after every service, but I think it's important that we know what our mission statement is. And we exist to help women actively live life in community with other women and then confidently walk in their unique purpose and design. Listen, ladies, I've seen too many of you who walk with your heads down. I've seen too many of you who sometimes walk into church and you, I can tell you're overwhelmed. You, you are, 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 you have the weight um, of your burdens, of your struggles, everything on your shoulders, right? And so we can live life in community and we can walk in our unique purpose and design and know that God, our Father, is with us and we're not alone in the process. Your journey, this walk in Christ, you're not alone. We can do this um, together. So I, I want to make sure that I stress that. I want to make sure that you know that this is a place to grow. This is a, a place to be stretched. This is a, a place to be discipled. This is a place to, to just learn in God's word. And we get to do that together, whether it's in person, as we've done um, before, or um, live as well. Because it doesn't matter where we're at. God is there. We're always going to invite him into our presence and wherever we are at. So before we jump into what we have for you tonight, I want to make sure that we share a couple of announcements with you so that you know what's happening. And so I'm going to let my partner in crime, um, Lynn, talk to you and update you on our um, announcements. So take it away, Lynn. Yes. Yeah, so the first thing that we have is um, the creative volunteer team. Um, so social media, we absolutely need help with um, social media posts, um, helping with the blogs. Um, maybe you see where we, we definitely have an area of opportunity where we can kind of up our game um, from a social media platform standpoint. And we know that we definitely have some really amazing women um, that come to our church that are social media gurus. So we definitely are extending our hand and asking for help and um, asking for you to absolutely um, sign up. We, um, we need your help, you know, to kind of up our game and not only be just a great um, social media platform, but, you know, we want to make sure that we're reaching um, all over, you know, not only the country, but all over the world. We have people all over the country that watch us that are social media friends. And, you know, we just want to be just really, you know, we want to be seen and up our game. So please, if you can help, 
um, please, you know, sign up so that we can reach out to you and um, utilize your skill set. Secondly, um, it's super important that we know how we're doing. You know, we can't um, do better. We can't, you know, um, add additional. Maybe there are some things that you wanted to do in 2021 that we just didn't think about. You know, we get the best ideas from you guys and um, from the feedback. Maybe there's something that you wanted to do, like a book club or something, um, you know, that we just did not think about. Uh, we, we need your feedback. We want to know what, what are some things that you want us to do in 2022? You know, um, it is an anonymous survey that you can do. It's through SurveyMonkey. Um, and uh, what it is, is it's going to ask you some questions about what's, what are some things that we did right? What are some areas of opportunity? Because we're all about transparency and really, you know, fixing and, and talking about things that we can do better. And then what are some things that you want to see in 2022? So um, super important. All of the links are at the bottom of, um, of the screen as well as in the comment section. So please click on that. And then something um, really, really cool. Chosen is very, very big about supporting under other ministries within our church and also outside of our church. One of the ministries that we are absolutely supporting is the crew. Um, they go to the juvenile detention center in Tampa, which is amazing. Um, and it's an amazing outreach. And actually on Saturday, December 11th, they would like to give um, both males and females that are in the detention center hygiene bags. Um, sometimes it's really hard for them to get the hygiene that they need and or the support. So we would like to bless those children with hygiene bags. And that includes toothbrushes, deodorant, um, toothpaste, anything that you would consider hygiene that would be allowed in a detention center. You also have to keep that in mind as well. Um, we will be collecting those items over the next few Sundays. So if you can bring just a couple of items, you know, go to Dollar Tree, you can go to Target, Walmart, pick up a couple extra things. Um, we know that we always can add that extra dollar onto, <laughs> yeah. onto our grocery, you know, list. So add that extra couple of dollars and, and bring um, any hygiene items that you have. Uh, we will have a table in the foyer area. Yep. Uh, oh, the date again is um, Saturday, December 11th, but we will be in the foyer area um, all, every Sunday up until that date, collecting items. Yeah. So basically the next three Sundays, um, we'll be collecting the items. And then that last um, Sunday, I believe it's December 5th, Mm -hmm. um, on that Sunday, we're going to ask for a couple of activators to help us put the bags together, put all the hygiene bags together, and we'll do that during um, each service. So let us know also if you're available on December 5th to help us, you know, with that. So awesome. Thank you so much, Lynn. Thank awesome. you, ladies. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me hear you. Let me hear you. So it's not really hearing you. <laughs> Not really hearing you, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Let me know in the comments section. Put an emoji, something. Let me know that you're with us as we um, get ready. And so what I wanted to do is first, before I introduce um, Monique to you, is, all right, somebody's ready. Somebody's ready. Awesome. Um, so Monique had reached out to me. This is a, a couple of months ago. I don't remember exactly when. I. All I know is it's before Flavor Fest, because I had mentioned to her, Flavor Fest is right around the corner. Do you know what that means? Um, but she reached out to me and basically, lady, she offered herself to us. She said whatever we needed, right? Um, and so I appreciated that. Um, I let her know, okay, we've got Flavor Fest coming up. So you guys know you were here for Flavor Fest. You know, that was a huge, you know, big deal. But I told her I would be back in contact, you know, with her. Um, she has a heart for women, a heart for teens um, as well. Um, and so I want to share a little bit of what um, she does here. But she's a highly trained clinician. OK, ladies, highly trained clinician. Um, and she's dedicated to helping you, helping her clients. And this is about restoring joy and hope in their lives. She has a master's degree in mental health counseling. But guess what, guys? 
she's just a couple of semesters away from getting her doctorate. What? 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 Ooh. Your girl writes a doctorate, okay? Uh, so that is super, super cool. Um, so she's committed to helping her clients heal from trauma, from depression, from anxiety, which we're going to talk about today, and grief. And she's ex she has experienced counseling individuals, couples, families, um, and like I said, experience working with teens and adolescents as well. So when I met her and I found out, you know, who she was and what she does, one of the things that stuck out to me, like I mentioned to you and like I've been sharing in, in a lot of our um, posts is that um, anxiety, you see it everywhere, especially last year with the pandemic, right? And I know, I know that a lot of you have been dealing with anxiety, different levels of anxiety. Now, some anxiety is normal, but there are some of you, and I know this, some of you, um, even last year, did not leave your house because you were anxious. Some of you were having panic attacks. Some of you were fearful, right? So we're going to talk about this, and I'm excited because I believe wholeheartedly, right? God doesn't want us living this way. God did not intend for us to live this way. So I will do everything in my power. And if I can't do it, I'll get somebody else to help me. And so I brought on Monique Reynolds to talk with you ladies um, today. So I want you guys to give Monique a warm welcome. Put that in the comments right now. A warm welcome Woo! to Monique Reynolds. Give her some high five. Oh. Say welcome to Monique. Um, we love having you on here with us, Monique. And I we've been prepping the ladies for you. We've been prepping oh, them. Good. Um, and yeah, and we just know that you have a word for us and it's going to be um, liberating. That I'm always about um, living free, living free in the life that God has called us to live. Amen. Not with our heads down, but with our heads up. So what do you have for us, Monique? Amen. Well, thank you for such a beautiful introduction. I'm like yeah. flattered. I'm blushing back here off camera, <laughs> but <laughs> you're so sweet. Thank you so much for having me, ladies. Welcome, welcome. Now, just like Pastor Lucy mentioned, I love it to be interactive. So um, I, since I can't see your beautiful faces, um, whenever I ask maybe to raise your hand, you can just type amen in the chat for me, right? Just give me an amen. Um, and I'd love to hear your feedback and your comments all the way through. But uh, just like Pastor Lucy said, um, I work full time as a mental health therapist I'm at Life Transformation Counseling um, and, you know, gave my life to Jesus about a decade ago. Been walking with him and falling in love with him more and more ever since. And he's really liberated me from my own struggles with anxiety and depression over those years. And so he's called me into the ministry of mental health and I love it. And um, I really love meeting with people one on one, but also speaking with ladies like you and how to uh, in a group setting and how to really see you guys experience freedom. So before I get started, I know it's seven o'clock on Sunday. The last thing that we need is some PowerPoint presentation about diet, exercise and sleep. That's going to put you to sleep. OK, we're going to have some fun tonight. I want to keep it interesting because if you're anything like me, I've left some talks about anxiety going. I already know I don't eat well. I already know I need a little bit more sleep. I already know I could pray a little bit more. Tell me something I don't know, right? And so that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to give you some hidden keys to experiencing relief from stress and anxiety. And my goal is that you guys would leave this chat or this video stream uh, feeling a little bit refreshed with some practical nuggets on how you can apply this to your life. So I'm excited. And if it's okay with you, I'm just gonna jump right in. And I actually wanted to start it with stress. So the reason I want to start talking about stress is because it's one of the most common things that we mistake for anxiety. Um, and now I know none of you ladies are burnt out, right? Not one of us is burnt out. So I'm gonna give you some tips for your friends, right? None of us are burnt out. But um, one of the biggest misconceptions we have about stress is that we feel like maybe we just need more sleep or maybe we just need to go on a vacation, right? But one of the most potent things to help pull you guys out of stress or burnout is not actually more naps or vacation, it's actually joy. Now, I'm not talking about any kind of joy. I'm talking about childlike, innocent joy. So I'm talking about the things that you guys like to do when you were five or six years old. So when you were five or six years old, it was the most pure, innocent version of yourself and locked in your mind was actually the most pure or innocent version of things that brought you joy, making those things the most potent to help you um, 
experience relief from things like stress or feeling overwhelmed or burned out. So since I can't see your faces, you guys got to tap type it in the chat for me. What did you guys like to do when you were five or six years old? I want to know. I'll give you guys a moment. Anybody? Here we go. Okay. Roller skating. <laughs> Playing on the swing set. I love it. I love it. Scribbling on paper. Okay. Some of you guys were artistic. Playing tag. Oh, I love it. So I know as adults, we like to go to the gym or you guys may even like to grab a drink with a friend, right? These adult versions of what brings us joy or relief. Um, but I want to encourage you, ladies, if you're ever feeling stressed out or burnt out, go outdoors and play the way you used to play with your kids if you have them. Um, if you're if you were into art at five or six years old, it's a really powerful stress relief mechanism for you cognitively. Right. For me, when I was five or six, my favorite toy was my easy bake oven. And to this day, if I'm stressed or burned out, baking refreshes my mind. It's something so creative. So a lot of people don't know that we got to have more fun, but also innocent joy, right? Go jump on a trampoline or go bowling with your kids, right? We get bogged down in the day-to-day -day and we don't make time for those things anymore. But I just wanted to encourage you, ladies. So five or six years old, whatever you like to do. And if you have a spouse, encourage them to join you in that too. It actually amplifies the amount of relief that you experience if you do it with someone that you love or you join in with. And so speaking of love, give me an amen if any of you guys are in a relationship. Who's in a relationship, either married, dating, or engaged? Amen. Okay. Amen. <laughs> I'm sure lots of you ladies are in a relationship. Now, amen. Okay. Amen's all over the place. I love it. So speaking of love in our relationships, a lot of times we don't tap into our relationships enough to experience relief from things like stress and burnout. So the same way that nostalgic joy, doing things that you were you like to do when you were five or six, refreshes your mind, doing nostalgic things with your love partner, or if you guys are in a relationship, someone that you love or you're close to, um, helps really refresh us. Now, let me tell you what I mean. There's specific kinds of date night ideas that help you experience relief from burnout or stress for those of you in a relationship. So the first one is what I call the retro date. So the retro date is when you relive your first date with your husband or your, uh, for your guys, share them, share it with your husbands um, so they can join you in this. But reliving your first date reactivates that same sort of nostalgic joy. So if you went to Chili's and then you went roller skating right after, right? Go where you went, eat what you ate and wear what you wore. And I kid you not, like this is something that I've given physicians to help pull themselves out of burnout and they come back and they tell me that was so refreshing. That was so enlightening. Um, I, I'd never thought about that before, right? So these hidden keys, like things we never hear about. So relive your first date, eat what you ate, wear what you wore, and go where you went. Um, and you'd be so surprised. Another one, another fun date night idea, and you can, uh, you can tell your husbands about this, <laughs> is um, what I call the novelty date. So this kind of date idea is where you go do something that you guys have always wanted to do. So I don't know if any of you guys are adventurous, but like skydiving, if that's what you want to do, that's the time to do it. There's something about doing a new adventurous thing that we, has been on the back burner for a long time. Same thing. It refreshes us cognitively and it actually pulls us out of things like burnout and stress. Um, go somewhere with the kids you guys have always wanted to go, right? Like these unique ways of accessing. And you know, I know you guys are busy ladies. 20. Okay. I'm going to pause for a second. Somebody's in a relationship for 20 plus years. Okay. Amen. You guys are veterans in the game. I love it. <laughs> so even more so, some fresh ideas, ways to pull your loved ones into your burnout recovery or stress relief um, is really, really important. And so uh, doing things with the kids as well um, is really fun. It brings about that innocent joy again. And like I said, you guys are busy. And I know that adding a bunch of things to your schedule may or may not be practical, especially in this season, but it's less about adding more time and making better use of the little bit of time that we do have, right? In addition to the spiritual, in addition to the mental, like really capitalizing on what's going to really refresh me and pull me out of stress and burnout. Um, 
So I will pause right there. Anybody have questions in the chat? I love what I'm seeing. I would love to skydive. Hi, so as the, as the questions are coming in, because I know that there's a little delay, Lisette has been married 40 years. That is amazing. Congratulations, Lisette. 40 years. <laughs> 40 All right. years. Yep. Lisette, we may have to get some tips from you at the end. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Any questions, ladies? Type it in there. I love Sarah's comment. Uh, have to go back to the 90s. Mm. Let's see. I see lots of applauses, lots of ideas. Any questions? I'll give you guys a couple more seconds before I move on. <laughs> Fight Club should hear this. I love that comment. What's um, Pastor Lucy? What's Fight Club? Fight Club is our men's ministry at the church. Okay, I figured. I figured yeah. <laughs> we want some of the men to get these love ideas. Yes, they, they yes. need to hear it. Absolutely. Okay, beautiful. So I see some really good questions. The first one I see is What if your childhood of five or six was detrimental? Very good question. If we had some hard experiences during childhood, um, it does shape the way that you would answer that kind of a question or really relive. Um, so another thing is if your childhood at five or six years old was pretty traumatic, um, then I would just, just to give a surface level answer, I would love to go deep with you on a one-on-one -on -one session, but to give you a little bit of a surface level, then I would maybe just backtrack to maybe, uh, maybe your teenage years, anything, any time in your life where you, that's nostalgic, but you do remember experiencing joy or, um, you know, uh, a certain level of love or, you know, just excitement in your life. So that's a really, really good question. And a question that is very deep and I could go more in depth with in a real counseling session. Um, but I, I hope that's helpful heading back in time. So what if you're not married? Beautiful. Um, so actually fun fact, I'm not married yet, but what I would do, what I would recommend is incorporating like either your friendships um, this is something that you can pull in if you have a close relationship with your parents, anybody, really the point of it, not so much just a marriage, but anybody that you consider a close loved one, if you have them join in with you on these kinds of activities, psychologically, you actually experience more relief. God really wired us for connection. And so even our relief is amplified if it's done in connection. Yeah. Um, great questions. Is it in fact true that working at sweat, sweat toxin releases stress? Yes. So working out is a great source of stress relief. Um, now, as far as the toxin piece goes, the part that I know studying the brain and being a therapist is more along the lines of um, endorphin production. So when people are depressed or stressed or anxious, usually your mind is pretty depleted of endorphins. And the number one endorphin factory is cardiovascular exercise. So that's why sometimes after we work out, we do feel that high. And I want to make sure I reiterate, exercise is great for stress relief and burnout and definitely incorporate that. Um, but I just wanted to provide some additional perspective or some new things you may have never heard about um, in experiencing burnout or stress relief. Great question. Uh, let's see. All right. For the interest of time, I'm going to keep going. And if you guys have want to jot down your questions and pass them on to Pastor Lucy at the end, I would love. Um, I'm going to have a Q and A at the very end as well, so you can revisit them, or even at a later date, she can um, pass along some info if she'd like. Can I keep going, Pastor Lucy? Am I good? Absolutely. And the ladies, if you I, if you have a question, just put it in the comment section, and we'll make sure to to get it at some point. But keep going. Okay. Perfect. So I hope that was refreshing for you, something new, something different. So now let's move on to anxiety, right? The main reason we're here. So when a lot of us hear anxiety, we typically think of people who have panic attacks, right? Or the question, should I get on medication, right? All these major things that we commonly associate with anxiety, but even the little things in life like ruminating thoughts, right? Or playing scenarios over and over in our mind or constant questions about our future, right? 
questions that we have about God, like over and over, these are some ways that anxiety really manifests itself. And I wanted to share a little secret with you guys because the enemy doesn't create anything. He only distorts God's holy creation. So actually your anxiety mechanism was created as a gift from God to you as a discernment tool to go, okay, something's a little bit out of line here. Something in what I'm focusing on is a little bit out of line. Or maybe the way I'm relating to someone I love, but ultimately maybe the way I'm relating to the Lord, right? And the anxiety mechanism of our brain was actually a holy creation for us to discern boundaries, right? So I want to give credit where credit's due. God gave us that, but unfiltered or um, unmonitored, it can be harmful if we stay there too long, right? And so um, when we think about anxiety, there are some things that are common alarms. And I wanted to reframe that for you guys. I wanted to reframe anxiety from being a completely negative thing to just seeing it as a prayer alarm. That's what I tell my clients. I go, I want you to see anxiety as prayer alarms. It's just a good indicator. God's letting me know that, that, that something's off here. Let me go seek the Lord and figure out what, what that is, right? On a surface level. We'll get deeper in a second. And so when we think about what are those common things in our day-to-day -day that um, really trigger it, there's usually three common, especially for women, three major areas that trigger this. So the first one is our love life, <laughs> our relationships, right? I know a lot of you guys are in relationships. I saw a lot of amen. So amen. The second one is work responsibilities, right? Um, give me an amen if you work or work full time. I want to see the amens flood in the chat. And then the third major area is actually parenting responsibilities cause women a lot of anxieties. Um, so give me some amens if those apply to you. Um, but if all in all, if I had to summarize it, the major source of anxiety for women in this day and age is that juggle right? The juggle of all those responsibilities I just mentioned, and then you add in comparison in there, mom guilt, wife guilt, you're looking at a lot of potential sources of anxiety, right? So before I get any deeper, I wanted to give you guys an opportunity. So if you guys have something to write with, I know I can't see you guys, but if you have something to write with, I want you to pause. I'm going to give you a moment like a reflection with the Lord for a second. And I want to give you about a minute or so to jot down your top two triggers for anxiety. I want to give you the space for that. So I'll give you about a minute. Think with the Lord about that. Jot those down. And then if any of you would like to, you can share that with us in the chat as well. Hmm. Okay. Agatha, I love it. I see your comment. Thank you for being so honest and transparent. Mom guilt. That's a big one. And work, work stressors. Okay. That's for you. Social pressure. Work in relationships. I see that, Anna. Hmm. Okay. Future uncertainty in relationships. Ooh, here's a new one. Starting a business. Very real, right? Oh, I love how interactive you guys are. Thank you for sharing. Extended family and health. Very real trigger of anxiety. So good. Okay. Thank you, ladies, for sharing. And now that you guys had a moment to personally identify, there's. I wanted to make sure I gave you guys room for that and didn't just lecture your ear off. <laughs> but now that you've identified personally what are some of those triggers, now I want to share with you guys about the meat of what this meeting's all about. Like, how do we really soothe our anxieties, right? And before I say anything else, I wanna encourage you guys as daughters of the Lord Jesus Christ, you guys have access to the Prince of Peace, right? So I just wanna let you know that this already puts you about two to three steps ahead of the average person who may be coming to counseling, seeking relief for therapy. The fact that you have a framework of understanding of how to relate to God already gives you an advantage that a lot of other women don't have. So I want to encourage you ladies to really capitalize on that um, before diving into the practical and the psychological. And we'll touch back on the spiritual too. So anxiety and how to soothe it. 
So a little quick background. When we think about maybe the day-to-day -day sources of frustration or anxiety, we're probably thinking a bit of a web, right? A web of emotions. It gets tied up in there and we don't know how to get out of it. But when you're thinking about maybe a lifetime of pain or frustrations tangled up in there, you're thinking of something like this. You're dealing with a rubber band ball <laughs> full of pain and emotions um, and really what your mind is craving. So when the anxiety alarm, remember the prayer alarm is going off? When that alarm is going off, your mind is saying, hey, I'm craving a space that's safe to be able to unwind this, right? We got to unwind this. And what does unwinding really mean? That's where we get that word processing. I'm sure you guys have heard people say that I need to process. That's all that really means. And so when we process this rubber band ball, we begin to peel it apart. And that's actually what makes your brain go ah, a little bit of a sigh, right? Your brain can deal with unwinding, but an, a stuck ball like this, that's what makes us feel anxiety. So if I had to give you a little bit of a formula, right? So unprocessed pain plus time equals anxiety or depression. I'll say that one again. So unprocessed pain over time equals anxiety and depression. And it's kind of as simple as that. And so when the Holy Spirit is prompting us in our heart or we feeling anxious, right? God's actually leading us to do something with some pain that we may have repressed over the years, or it could just be a day-to-day -day frustration, right? But I think this is really God's heart for us as his daughters is that we would know how to do this well and not um, let things fester or walk around our life <laughs> with a rubber band ball of pain stuck in our minds. Um, and so God psychologically wired us for connection. And that's actually the best way to process is to unwind it with someone else, if possible, like one of his people, like Pastor Lucy or another woman in the church that you really trust. And if ultimately nobody else, him, right? We still have that option is that God is the wonderful counselor. I always tell people, I'm like, you have the wonderful counselor with you at all times. You have a kind of good one right here, but you have the wonderful counselor with you all the time. So I'm like, take advantage of the perfect therapist that God's gifted you, <laughs> right? And so I know, you're okay, you're probably thinking, all right, Monique, that's cute. You're telling me to process my pain, but what on earth does that mean? And how do I do it? <laughs> and well, I'm glad you asked. And that's what I want to equip you guys with <laughs> tonight. So once again, if you guys have something to write with, I want you to jot down some of these words. And then we're going to walk through them together and process this together. And I love, love, love that you're giving me feedback in the chat. Yeah. Everybody got something to write with? All right. I want you to write down these steps. And it sounds like a lot, but it's not, I promise. And I'm going to walk you through them and we're going to process this together. So number one, acknowledge. I want you to write that word, acknowledge. Number two, express. Number three, comfort. Comfort. Number four, forgiveness. Two more, two more, I promise, not too many. Sec next one is acceptance. Jot that down. Only one more. Last one is resolution. Okay, so that seems like a lot. But the better we get, just like anything we want to be good at in life, if you want to be a good baseball player, you practice. If you want to be a good worship leader, you practice, right? The more that we practice walking through these steps, it goes from taking us an hour to taking us one minute to process our pain with the, with the Lord or with people. And then that's how our heart really remains uncluttered and we unwind this, right? Okay, so acknowledge and express. Now, some of us we all fall somewhere in the spectrum. Some of us are stuffers and some of us like to talk a lot, right? Some of us fall somewhere in between. So all my stuffers on the chat, I want you to acknowledge, are you a stuffer? I want you to acknowledge, are you a stuffer or are you talkative or are you in between? Put it in the chat. I wanna know who I'm working with. <laughs> Are we stuffers? Are we talkative? Or are we in between? In between. I'm a talker. Okay. Okay. Someone said I'm all three. I love that. 
I love that response. That's hilarious. All three, both. Okay, right. Talker, stuffer. Okay, so I'm working with a mix. Now, once again, okay, we I go into myself in between. All right, I love it. I love the feedback. So once again, God is a God of in between, right? God is not extreme one way or the other. He doesn't want us to only stuff, but he doesn't want us to vent or uh, complain either, right? So how do we really walk in this middle ground? So same thing, I want to encourage you. I know you guys have amazing pastors at Crossover, and you are more than welcome to come see us at Life Transformation Counseling if you want a safer space to do this, maybe go a little deeper. But same thing, you can always do all of this with the Lord. And so um, really, I, I want to encourage you ladies to seek the Lord about how do I operate in this middle ground? Um, now, some of us feel safer talking with maybe a spouse, like you said, or a trusted friend. Um, but everybody, so whether you're introverted or extroverted, psychologically, pain is processed or healed when we actually express it and when we actually talk through it, right? And so the difference between venting or uh, the difference between healthily processing is when when we vent with the intent to hurt or to complain that's where that's the difference between venting and processing processing is getting honest about your own pain and your own process this is how this impacted me right sometimes it can be tempting to complain about other people's actions but when we process and we're sharing with people you want to keep it focused on the impact within self that's one little tip i'll give you and that's one tip i help my clients in the office I go, I know they hurt you. I know. But bring it back. What was the impact personally? Let's talk about your heart. Let's talk about, right? So when you guys meet with Pastor Lucy or anybody else, keeping it focused on the wound on inside as opposed to other people's actions is the best way to properly express it. Yeah. So we acknowledge and we express. Those are the first two. Now, the third step, remember I mentioned comfort? That's actually my favorite. Because this is the part that we always try to skip over or a lot of us don't really realize. So um, some of the most uh, skilled clinicians in trauma treatment and even neurologists have acknowledged that it's impossible to have an anxious thought if your body is 100% relaxed. Now, that is a crazy thought to fathom, but it's true. Our cognitions and our physical is so intertwined that it's impossible for you to have an anxious thought if your body is 100% relaxed. Now, the problem with that is that most of us don't realize when we're not 100% relaxed, right? Some of us, when we sit in our chair, we have the, some of us are the leg jumper. You can't see my leg, but we're the leg bouncer, or some of us play with our nails, or we rub our hands, or if you're anything like me, sometimes you're a hair twirler, right? We do these things and our bodies aren't fully relaxed. And so when you go to process either with God or process with your pastor, we want to get good and making sure that we're actually physically relaxed as we share our pain, right? And now ideally, if we're talking to say Pastor Lucy, I keep using you as an example of Pastor Lucy, but I hope that's okay. So um, if we are talking to Pastor Lucy, right? She may offer a little bit of comfort, right? She may rub your back a little bit, or she may offer a hug, right? Things that physically soothe us. But if we don't have the luxury of that, we have to get good at soothing ourselves. So there is something that I um, wanted to give you guys. I call it my back pocket breathing technique. I know there's a lot of uh, talk out there about breathing or meditating. It's nothing weird like that. Remember, we all love Jesus. I know this. There's nothing weird or trippy. But really, all you're accessing in this specific breathing technique I'm about to give you guys is your, your respiratory system and the switch that it is on your anxiety mechanism. So when you breathe a certain way, it actually, you see the switch behind me? it actually like switches off the anxiety mechanism in your brain. And it gives you a moment where you go like cognitively and you can actually assess what you need to be focusing on now or what the next best step is. Yeah. So if it's okay with you guys, I know I can't see you, but I wanted us to do it together. I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to do it. So um, if you have a second, I'll walk you through with it. And it's called, it's super simple. It's called three, four, five breathing. All it is, you breathe in for three, breathe out for three. Breathe in for four, out for four. Breathe in for five, out for five. And by the time you've gotten through that, you've just switched off the anxiety mechanism in your brain. So um, if you have a second, I'll do it with you. But I want you to get comfortable. 
in your chair, wherever you're sitting, if you can, arms relaxed, feet relaxed, hands relaxed, right? Thank you for typing it in. Three, four, five breathing. It's such a good one. Um, and you can do this. You can do it at work. You can do it in the car if you can't absolutely be 100% still. But if you can, I thought we could do it together. So I'm just going to count for you guys. And then I want to know how you feel. A lot of people at the end go, whoa, I could take a nap. <laughs> right? So let's do it. I'm going to do it with you guys. So close your eyes. And remember, when you breathe in, breathe in through your nose. And you want to breathe out through your mouth gently. like. So eyes closed. Breathe in for three. One, two, three. Breathe out for three. One, two, three. Breathe in for four. One, two, three, four. Breathe out for four. One, two, three, four. Breathe in for five. One, two, three, four, five. All the way out for five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Eyes open. Some of you might be tired. Pastor Lucy, how do you feel? <laughs> I'm relaxed here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it's so funny because it doesn't take very long, but exactly what that's exactly what just happened. You just went on the physical. And now we are spiritual beings. We are very much cognitive, but God gave us a body, right? And we have to be able to tap into the physical part of what's fueling our anxiety as well. So I wanted to equip you guys, and I give that one to my clients. So you guys got that one for free, a little freebie. Um, but people do this in the car. People do it, like I said, at school, if you're at the desk, at work. Um, a good little back pocket one where it doesn't take a lot of time, but it gives you just a breath of fresh air when you it kind of stills your mind a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'll pause there. Anybody have questions for me? Thanks, Connie. Connie's loving this. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here too. This is fun. Anybody have questions for me before I keep going? I'll give you a second. I know there's a little bit of a delay. I know Sarah put in a, um, a sleeping emoji. <laughs> Looks like Sarah is feeling, oh, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Tilia. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. No questions needed. Just want to make sure I give you guys an opportunity. And I know at the end we can have more Q&A if you guys need. So one thing I wanted to share with you guys. So I shared the physical, right? Give you some good practical burnout and stress tip relief. Uh, sorry, stress relief tips, and also really wanted to emphasize the power of processing with somebody. Guys, I wish I could press a magic button. I wish that I could, um, <laughs> Natalie's on here. Um, I wish that I could press a magic button and give some sort of quick fix. But like I said before, anytime we want to really cultivate something or anytime we want um, to create a new way of thinking, repetition is the key, right? You guys ever seen a forest and then there's that one path that you can tell people walk on it? It wasn't always that way, but somebody decided to walk that path and they walked it again and they walked it again and they walked it again. And that's exactly what goes on in our mind is that we learn the triggers happen and we go, okay, there's an easier way to do this. I can walk through the steps. It'll help bring me some peace. Even though my surroundings are chaotic in my heart, I can still be relaxed and at peace. Yeah. So I just want to encourage you with that. And um, so another thing, as I was praying and really preparing for this meeting, something that the Lord really put on my heart to share with you guys was the importance of prioritizing his presence. I can't say this enough. Right. We serve the prince of peace <laughs> and he has the full abundance of everything we could ask for when it comes to a stilled heart or um, quieted thoughts. Right. And I think as his daughters, he really wants us to experience the fullness of joy of what it means to not have to carry the weight of anxiety anymore. You know, and so a couple of scriptures I want to share with you guys. The first one was Isaiah 26, verse three. I'm a little devotional in the mix, um, but it says and this is the New Living Translation. But it says you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Right. This idea of fixed focus psychologists acknowledge that people who don't even believe in God acknowledge that when you fix your focus on something, that's the beginning of anxiety relief. So God backed up science in his word, which I love, love, love. 
all these psychological principles are in the Bible. Um, and so then Philippians 4, 6 through 7, actually 6 through 9 is amazing. But 6 through 7 says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And a lot of you may be familiar with that verse, but I wanted to highlight a little piece of that. So it says with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Now, once again, atheist psychologists and neurologists have acknowledged that gratitude also switches off the anxiety mechanism. Like these are people who don't believe in God, y'all. And this is backed up in the Bible. Um, but they acknowledge that when we um, give thanks out loud with our mouth, it it activates your prefrontal cortex and it turns off the amygdala, which the amygdala is your anxiety mechanism. And so it goes and it switches it off and your brain begins to remember that which is true, that which is good, right? Even though my surroundings are um, anxiety provoking, I do have a great family. Thank you, God, for right. And so it combats like psychologically. I wish I had the time to go into it neurologically, neurologically with you guys. I'm a little bit of a nerd for that kind of thing. Um, but I just want to encourage you, like, there is not only is this spiritual truth, but this is psychological, scientific truth that God's word and God knows what he's talking about. He once again, he's the wonderful counselor. So I don't want to short circuit it or give you guys some sort of whimsical <laughs> approach when God's word really has it down. So we calm ourselves in his presence, we process, right? We get honest with the Lord and we cultivate a heart of thanksgiving. And the more you repeat that path, it really does develop a more peace, um, a peace prone mind. Like your mind goes to the peace response quicker than if this isn't something that we cultivate. So um, yeah, I just thought that was really fascinating. And um, another little uh, fascinating tip that shows the word of God backs up science psychologically is that when you look at the anxiety or even addictive mechanism, because sometimes to calm our anxieties, right? Some of us turn to substances, right? If we're honest, or some of us, we, some of us had struggles with pornography, or some of us have struggles with um, relationships, right? Like turning to people, to satisfy that craving that we have on the inside, right? These are all very real struggles. And I want to empathize with you guys. And it's a part of what I love in my job is empathizing and meeting people where you're at. But this idea of the anxiety and addictive mechanism, same thing, the enemy doesn't create anything. He only distorts God's perfect creation. So you were actually designed to be addicted to the Holy Spirit. So Anything that you do every single day, you become addicted to it, right? But when you look at the way the addictive mechanism in the mind was created, you were supposed to feel like you can't go a day without God's presence. God wired you to feel like you need to be addicted to the Holy Spirit. That's what I want you to be addicted to, right? Be addicted to coming to me with your problems. Be addicted to uh, pouring out your heart before me or my people, right? So this idea of all these things are great creations that God has gifted you with. And so we can just win that back for his glory. And by the power of his Holy Spirit, we can really experience um, some freedom there, right? We're strengthening our brains, but we're strengthening ourselves spiritually too. Um, so if I can recap with you guys super quick, the major steps to really processing anxiety, and that's what's going to really cultivate this life of freedom for you guys. Step one, we acknowledge first in yourself, acknowledge what's going on right? Sometimes that's half the battle. <laughs> what am I actually feeling? So we acknowledge, we express it to the Lord first or to somebody else that we trust, we feel safe. We comfort, we find comfort. Thank you for the reminder at the bottom. We find comfort. Um, if there's room or need for forgiveness, right? Even in the little day-to-day -day things, make a point to pause and exercise forgiveness, right? Accept the reality and we go, okay, What's next, Lord? What do you want me to focus on right now? What do you want my attention, right? I'm not gonna numb it with social media. I'm not gonna numb it and suppress it with substances. I'm not gonna numb it with distractions. Jesus, what do you want me to focus on? And how can you give me peace in this moment right now? And the better we get at this, the better we can impart that to our families, impart that to your children, right? And really walk a victorious life um, in Christ. So, Pastor Lucy, if you have anything to add, I wanted to bring you back on, if that's okay. Sure thing. Listen, this has been um, amazing. I love the scriptures that you just, you know, shared. Um, if I can share a, a scripture as well, um, 
So you were you were talking about this um, earlier. First of all, let me just say, let me just say what you said about the scientists, right? Oh. It's impossible to feel anxiety or have anxious thoughts if you're hundred percent relaxed, like mm. that right there was like so key. And then you brought in that um, breathing exercise. And then we read um, Philippians four, six, and seven. It was already in God's word. So like we forget that the tools are right here in front of us. Like we have God's word and the answers are found there. So I thank you um, for that. But what I wanted to share with you guys is because I know that sometimes we can feel alone. So when you were talking about uh, are you a stuffer, right? Or are you talkative or a venter? Unfortunately, I say unfortunately because I know as a stuffer, right, I'm internalizing. And a lot of times what happens is then I explode, right? That was like, you know, before Christ. You know, now you know, God's been working in my life and, you know, been much better. However, right, um, as a believer in Christ, as a leader, right, I don't always have people that I can go and talk to about my mm. own anxious feelings or what I'm dealing with as a mom, as a leader, as a wife, and so forth. So I wanted to um, share real quick 1 Samuel 36, mm, right? And this yeah. is talking about David. You see, David encouraged himself in the Lord. So even though sometimes I may feel alone, right? I know I'm not alone because I have the Holy Spirit. And then you said we were designed to be addicted to the Holy Spirit. And I was like, oh my goodness, I want to be addicted to him. I do. Come I really on. Do. But this verse says, David was greatly distressed, right? And, and because the soul of his people, they were grieving. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. If, mm. if anything, it's just that. We can encourage ourselves in the Lord. It is possible that we don't always have to go to social media or vent or so forth, that I can encourage myself in the Lord. So even that today was an encouragement. I have the tools that I need. I can breathe. I can do the three, four, and, and five, and then I can fix my thoughts on things um, from above. And I got to make sure that I'm on a re relaxed state like you just put me, right? <laughs> because then that eliminates the anxious thoughts from um, coming in. So this was so helpful. Loved it. So ladies, what else? What else have you um, are getting from this as well? So just know that you can encourage yourself the Lord. Awesome stuff, um, Monique. So thank you. For yes. That. Okay. I do see a really good question. And this is very relatable. Thank you so much, Sarah. Forgiveness can be a struggle for me. Any tips? So the first thing I always address when addressing this topic of forgiveness is I address that there's it's twofold. So there's the initial decision by faith to forgive but then there's also recovery from impact, right? And both are very real elements to this. Forgiveness is a process. I think it's one of those things, especially as believers, we try to have it be one and done, but forgiveness is a journey. There's phases to forgiveness. I walk people in my sessions through that all the time about really taking the time to truly understand um, what happened, how that impacted me, how did that shape how I see God, like all the elements so we decide by faith to forgive and God will honor that. The Holy Spirit will give you the ability to, to move through the rest of the process. But God is once again, the perfect counselor and he's patient with you in that. He knows the difficulty of that. Um, and so I just wanted to encourage you in that way and um, really being uh, patient with yourself in the forgiveness process. So we go, okay, I wanna understand or uncover how this impacted me. Now I have the choice to decide to forgive him or to not. Right. Go through the pros and cons. Like if I were this sounds silly, because as Christians, we think you better forgive. But sometimes we have to slow down and go, if I did forgive them, what would be the benefits of that? And if I didn't, what would that mean? Now, obviously, we have the Lord's heart. And so we want to ultimately get to that place where we can forgive. But God's patient with you. So I would say if there's any tip I would give, it's that being more patient with yourself in the forgiveness process and remembering that it is a process and it's twofold. The, the, the faith decision and then recovery from impact. And the Lord, as the wonderful counselor, will walk you through that recovery from impact piece. And it takes strength to forgive. And I always say unforgiveness is like a prison cell and you're the one in jail. We experience more freedom. Like it's for us. God wants us to set us free. It has nothing to do with the other people. He goes, I want your heart to be free. I want your heart to be at peace. Yeah, so I hope that was helpful. Um, but just some little tips. It's a process and twofold. Great question. Anybody else have any questions? I see a lot of amens and that's good. <laughs> you guys are awesome.
Oh, beautiful, Tia. I'm glad that the breathing helped. Somebody, HQ Empowerment Workshop said that was a whole word. <laughs> That's so funny. Thank you for the encouragement. You're welcome, Sarah. Oh, thanks, Elizabeth. You guys are sweet. This is so fun for me. Any other direct questions while you have me? Pastor Lucy, maybe we have to come back. <laughs> I agree. I, I concur. <laughs> more. There's so much more. I have. I was on a time limit, so that all the bits and pieces I shared with you guys, there's so much more layers to that to unpack. But yes. I hope it was helpful for you, ladies. How, Sarah? Um, how can I set up a one-on-one? -on -one? You are awesome. Oh, that's sweet. So I mentioned I do work at Life Transformation Counseling. Um, we are right, right there in Wesley Chapel. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys are. There's the website link. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys are that close, but that's where we are. If you know Natalie Southward, she's the director. I know that she goes to Crossover, and that's how I got connected with Pastor Lucy. But um, yeah, you can reach out to us at LifeTransformationCounseling.com, or you could find me on psychology today. You just type in Monique Reynolds, uh, Florida or Wesley Chapel. I should pop up. Um, but yes, yeah, so either our website, life tra life transformation counseling.com or psychology today, Monique Reynolds. And either way, you could just give us a direct call. Um, and yeah, I would love if any of you girls or, or any of you ladies are interested, I would love to uh, be the Lord's hands and feet and really walk through some of this stuff with you guys, if that's something you're interested in. Um, but even just connecting with you guys at this level in ministry or just serving your church in this way is such a blessing to me too anyway. So um, love to connect any way you guys are comfortable. Oh, thank you, Connie. It's good to hear. Um, fun fact, I am not on social media <laughs> directly. Through life transformation counseling, we have our we have our social media pages. But I actually, um, I'll just share a little bit with you guys. I actually made a personal decision to stay off of social media. I try to really be integrous or be a woman of integrity with what I preach. And I noticed that social media was actually causing me some anxiety. And I was like, listen, if I'm telling women to lay off social uh, social media for the sake of bettering their anxiety, this was years ago, but. Um, it's something that has been really great, not being directly on any social media platform individually, like I said, for the business or for counseling. Yes. Um, but no, not directly. It was just something. It was a personal mental health decision and just emotional, spiritual health decision. But <laughs> nothing against social media is great. God uses social media. Let me be clear. Like God can use it. I don't speak negatively about it directly, but just a personal choice. As we're waiting to see if there are um, any questions, I think I have two. Sure. Um, so <laughs> one would be, I guess, at what point would you suggest that if if someone is consumed with anxiety and they're not mm -hmm. able to function um, a normal life, at what point do you suggest they see a doctor, therapist, you know, whoever? Great question. That's like the golden question. I'm actually glad that that came up. So same thing. There's no cookie cutter answer because everybody's situation is different. However, um, as a clinician, I'll start with medication because that's kind of the big question for some people. They go, do I just go straight to a psychiatrist? Do I see a therapist? My personal recommendation, because I really do believe that the Lord and the Holy Spirit can really set people free. I always recommend that people go see a therapist first before jumping straight to a psychiatrist where you can really get more of an emotional, mental evaluation done. Um, because unfortunately, unless you see a great, same thing, the field of psychiatry is wonderful and there's a need for it in certain people's lives. But unfortunately, sometimes you may run into a psychiatrist, especially if they're not a believer, like they're quick to write a prescription as opposed to really taking assessment of some maybe some deep trauma healing that needs to take place and that can be done without medication or you know explore more of the history or the underlying roots for the symptoms we see so that's my rec that's my first recommendation i always say go see a therapist or a psychologist first who's going to spend time to really assess and then if in the assessment if i were to assess that somebody may really benefit from psychiatry or um getting medication 
Um, I'm not well versed in the specific medications, but um, what you want to look for is to what degree does this really impact my day to day functioning? Mm -hmm. So I'm talking if somebody literally cannot get out of bed and go to work and it's been two weeks or even a month or um, there's uh, like a literally inhibited capacity to function in your like role as a mother or what like these major hindrances. That just clinically, like my clinical objective uh, perspective, that's when I would start to negotiate with somebody about, okay, you may want to consider because my perspective on psychiatric medication is I feel that psychiatric medication to our minds is what a crutch should be to a physical wound, right? Like mm -hmm. a crutches serve a purpose for a season and they're needed, right? But if I were to tell you I was on crutches for a year and a half, you'd be like, well, neat. <laughs> Mm -hmm. get off right. the crutches and rehabilitate the ankle and start walking. Right. And so that's actually what psychiatric medication should be. It's a crutch for a season if it really is that bad. And I've seen the Lord really deliver people through that. Like they've had a season where they were on medication very short term, had a great psychiatrist that was very intentional about dosage and all of that. And they were weaned off and they were operating well. And while they were on medication, they were, they were going to therapy, they were building their skills, they were learning they're getting deliverance spiritually, like all of that. So I always say pair medication with therapy. And then the, I, the goal is this is just a crutch for a season. I shouldn't be on this long term. But to answer your question directly is if it's severely impacting my work capacity, my functioning as a mom, like I'm really like inhibited from and it's been a while, mm -hmm. then that's when I would recommend potentially seeing a clinician to discuss psychiatric yeah. medication. I hope that answered your question. No, it did. That was good. Um, you know, and, and I, and I agree with your, you know, your, your thought as far as seeing a therapist first and getting assessed that way. Um, but I love what you said as far as, you know, if there is medication to be involved, that it's more of a crutch, it's temporary. For a season. It's only for yes. a season. Um, so I, I, I love that part and I, I appreciate you saying that. And so my other question, um, since I don't see any on the comment section uh -huh. here, would be from the things that you shared today, the tools that you gave us, and this has been um, some great stuff here. Yeah. Um, I have two teenage daughters, and I know <laughs> that for the moms that are out there, we have kids, and kids are also dealing with anxiety. Uh -huh. So would you say that pretty much we can share this with them, the techniques that you um, share with them? Or is it different for, you know, teenagers? Is their anxiety, you know, different than, than ours? Great question. Uh, the most direct answer is no, it's not that different, especially okay. an adolescent in teen years, because cognitively at about a teenage um, age stage of development, cognitively they can function or reason the way that an adult would. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say all this stuff, yeah, by all means, share it with your teenagers, even share it with your, even up to like, I would say 10 to 12 year olds, you can still operate in the same way. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what their minds at that stage crave is that connection with a secure person mm -hmm. in their life, which is usually mom or dad. Yeah. Um, so that actually helps soothe their anxieties a lot. And I will say this moms, uh, the level to which we manage and process through our anxiety, well, that gets imparted to the kiddos for sure. And it doesn't mean you have to have it all together. I actually recommend like looping them in. If you're ever not having a great day, sometimes as like as parents, parents try to hide that or, um, uh, you know, oh, it's okay, I'm fine. But you can just express, you know, mom's having an off day today. Like let's pray mm -hmm. together, right? Like join them in that process of healing and really model that for them. Mm -hmm. And that goes a long way. It goes, it teaches them that if they're having an off day, it doesn't mean the world's going to end or it's not a bad mm -hmm. thing. Mom has off days sometimes, right? But she knows how to get through it. And she's yeah. taught me and she's walked me through that. So I'd reckon, I'm like, yes, please impart this to your kids. Um, it's not that different. And the more they watch you walk through it is the more that they get good at it at an early age and are more stable in it as adults later. That's good. Thank you for that. Um, so I saw a question on here. Um, it had to do with, oops. Yeah. So it wasn't, okay. So I've heard this one. I've heard many people say they're having a panic attack. How can you identify that? Great question. Um, so same thing. It looks different for everybody. Some people have panic attacks. Oops. Sorry. Did you want to say something else? Oh no, sorry. I was, I was reading the, uh, another one. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, okay. No worries. Um, so panic attacks, um, usually 
typically, same thing, not the same for everybody, but typically when you see a panic attack, there is more of a physiological um, presentation there. So things like the shortness of breath or the racing heart. Um, sometimes people say they will like, their minds are so flooded, they can't think about anything. And there's more of a physical, uh, sometimes people feel like they can't breathe at all. Um, and they're about to shut down. And so um, that's and just to directly answer your question about identifying a panic attack versus maybe just racing thoughts is usually when you see more of the flare up physically, mm -hmm. um, a real uh, hindrance to like breathing or a racing heart, that kind of thing. So it's kind of like what Tia is saying here. She says that she feels lightheaded and at times falls out and her attacks are pretty severe. So that would be yeah. physiological when you can actually... Um, yes. We didn't experience it in that way. Yes. And thank you so much, Tia, for being so honest and vulnerable. We really appreciate it because I'm sure you're maybe not the only person on the chat that's experienced that before. And um, it is one of those things where um, even some of this stuff, like I mentioned, I know there's a lot more in depth we could go and I want to be respectful of everybody's time on a Sunday night. Mm -hmm. But this idea of if there's somebody that can join you in that moment. Obviously, if it's repeated and we're having severe panic attacks day in and day out, that would be somebody that I would I would say, you may wanna to talk to a therapist about just discussing what medication could look like or the relief it could bring for a season while we strengthen some of the cognitive. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think there's so symptoms like that are, like you said, I think it's a good assessment, Tia, that it does seem a little bit more severe um, but actually, if there's somebody that you live with or somebody that you're close to that can really like help you breathe, help stay calm with you, um, falling out. I don't know all the details of what you mean by falling out. Like if there's lost consciousness, then that's when you get more like a medical assessment to see. Because sometimes um, we have like heart issues or even, you know, other neurological things that get mistaken for a panic attack. So I'll put that out there in the environment, too. I've had clients where it actually was truly a heart issue and it, they weren't aware of that. So. I would also recommend, yeah, maybe talking to your medical provider to assess for that part of it too. But thank you so much for being so honest and yep. vulnerable, Tia. I love it. Yeah. We have a honest bunch of ladies here. I love it. I'm like, you guys are a good bunch. I wish I could see your beautiful faces. <laughs> I love are, it. We're transparent. And um, yeah, you know, th this has been great, Monique. Can we give it up for Monique, please? Aww, give it up. Thank you, guys. In the comment section. Let's give her. A warm thank you so, so much um, for your time on the Sunday oh, night. Thank you, ladies, absolutely. for um, tuning in. But this was really um, good stuff. I've, I've got notes. And, you know, even, you know, for me, like I said, I'm human. So I've, you know, I've gone through, you know, my own anxieties. I see it in my, you know, children as well. And I've seen it in so many, you know, women. But this is, for me, I feel like this has equipped me to help them even better now um, oh, and I have someone at the church and they're walking in and physiologically you can actually see them, you know, yeah. um, you know, really I'm um, stressing out over, you know, a situation. So thank you so much. And as the ladies are saying, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask Monique, if you wouldn't mind just closing us out in prayer, pray oh, for absolutely. the chosen ladies, anybody else who's on here, just really appreciate it. And we oh. would just love a, a blessing over us. Absolutely. Thank you, ladies, so much again for having me. It was such a blessing. And I look forward to coming back. Maybe we'll yes. do that again sometime. Yes. Definitely. Um, but I'll definitely close this out in prayer. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for who you are. God, I thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. And I thank you that this is your desire for all of us as your daughters to really walk in the fullness of freedom that you paid the price for on the cross. God, we pray. Um, I just pray for each and every woman on this chat, on this live stream, God, I pray that you would supernaturally impart peace even right now to their mm -hmm. hearts. God, I uh, speak just a still stillness in the spirit over them. God, I pray that you would give them the supernatural capacity to really discipline their thoughts, God. And I love the word that you gave me to prioritize your presence. God, mm -hmm. I pray, if nothing else, that these women would know that they can rest in your presence. We thank you for your promises in your word uh, that you are our refuge, Lord. We just speak peace and stillness over them, God, and they would prioritize your presence, really um, seeking you as the lover of their soul. God, we thank you that you're the lover of our soul and you desire for us to rest in you. 
you told us if we're weary, we can come to you and you would impart rest. So I pray each and every one of us would go deeper in that this week, deeper in that even in the midst of the holiday season, God, that you still desire our one-on-one -on -one time with you every day, the lover of our soul. I just, uh, I thank you for this evening. I pray that these ladies would um, really utilize the skills we all discussed tonight. And it's in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 And thank you, Lynn, for being our admin person and making yes. us pretty. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Working behind the scenes. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us. I, I, I know that it was helpful and I knew that it would be. I knew that it Aww. absolutely would be. Um, and I'm excited because we had people on YouTube as well. And that was yeah. our, our first time. So we're always trying to learn and grow. Um, and that's what I expect from, from you ladies as well. So have an amazing night. Thank you so much. We love you, ladies. Can I hear a chosen? Chosen. Awesome. Awesome. Have a good night, ladies. Bye, guys.